Africans on the continent did the same thing. They did the same thing, uh, you know, mixing their native language with uh, uh, the foreign language, and they have the pidgin. Okay, and the pidgin is it, some people call it corrupt, but it's not corrupt. It has it has grammar, and it is the grammar of the African language that is actually transposed into those uh, pidgin uh, varieties. So the Nigerian pidgin, the, the Ghanaian pidgin, and the pidgin from Papua New Guinea. You know, those people are, are of African descent as well, for the, the most part. And in, by the way, uh, Papua New Guinea is the area where there are most languages are. Uh, I, I, I used, okay, it's known for, I mean, they have like 800, okay, Papua New Guinea, about 800. 800. 800. Okay. Yeah, different, different languages. And they, they were the ones that uh, created the top scene, uh, you know, kind of pigeon, okay. And it, it, it's amazing. You see, we call African languages serial verb languages, okay? Serial verbs, you have those so-called verbs in series to construct a sentence. And that's what you see in, in, the, in the pidgin that we speak in Ghana, in Nigeria, Papua New Guinea, in the African-American English. African-American, they don't want the, uh, the, the white, white America to understand them they speak there in their community or next to the white, they speak that uh, purely African-American English and their white counterparts don't want to stay. And, the, you know, and they have the uh, ability and the skills to uh, create even new, new words based on circumstances, okay? An event that's so important that has uh, affected their lives, uh, uh, you know, new words are, are created out, out of those things. And it's amazing. So, that's, really so that's what it is. <laughs> it's very interesting. But, but come to think of it, how do, how do you really create language? I, I've been reflecting about it, looking at, for example, okay, it is true that they, they really say that it is a corrupt language, the pidgin English. Yeah. But how can it be corrupt really to think of it? Because I am not English, I am a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. I'll be presented with a language mm -hmm. which I'm going to put to test. How do I test it? I put it in my society. Mm -hmm. I ask this language some things, it cannot say it. Mm -hmm. Because I have been evolving for thousands of years, just mm -hmm. like the English people that have been evolving for, for several years. They brought me this language that cannot really describe the reality around me. Right. Because the language cannot stand the test of time, I have to modify it to suit my society. Hmm. Therefore, it, it, is, it becomes my language now. Yes. It is no longer the English, because if you take it to, to England, the English people will not really understand the Greek code in it, That's because right. it becomes difficult for them. But it's just like the United States, no? they modify English, not just in, this, in, the, in, the, in the phonetics, but hmm. even in the writing. Yeah. So, um, I can, yeah, yeah, I can, I can see now that there is this, that is this pattern going on here. Can yeah. you please help me understand how do people form new languages? Well, let me say this: we don't create languages. If you're talking about creating languages, it becomes artificial language, like the language for computers. You know, you, you, you uh, artificial intelligence, but it's always adaptation because language any language is made of uh, a limited set of rules and with a limited set of rules you can actually uh, compose an infinite number of sentences express an infinite number of ideas so all we're doing is just adding new words, okay? Just new words, just like, uh, uh, let me take the case of French, uh, the, uh, the debate between Macron and uh, Marine Le Pen, a number of, of 10 new words, <laughs> oh, and, and two of them were actually predominant, they were, they were very unique, 
uh, when uh, uh, Macron said he was accusing uh, Marine Le Pen of being, I mean, uh, skeptical about climate change, right? He, he said in French, vous êtes climato sceptic. And Marine Le Pen said, but if you, Macron, was it climato hypocrite, you know, you are being <laughs> hypocritical in your uh, belief that climate climate change is real. So that's we call that neologism, and words to define them are just uh, they are arbitrary, they are conventional, and they mean nothing outside of the, the context in which they they, they use. They take on meaning only in specific uh, context. So we don't create languages, but our language evolves naturally. Okay, they, they 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 evolve naturally. They came from the brain, came from the brain so naturally. And Noam Chomsky uh, said, uh, for example, born talking. There's a documentary by Noam Chomsky, famous linguist, American linguist that. Did. All of us human beings are endowed with the talents, with the skills, ability to speak at least one language. Okay, so, so it's natural. So the pigeon that you speak in Nigeria is not an invention. You're still using the rule of African languages to uh, when you are importing. Uh, foreign words, uh, foreign uh, phrases, etc. They do not change the grammar of your uh, native language at all. So it's adaptability uh, with a limited set of uh, rules. You can language is very productive. That's what it is. If I may, I may. Yeah, but but is it possible to change the rules <laughs> to change the rule of uh, PG English, for example, mm -hmm. in Nigeria to suit only the Nigerian situation? The pigeon, the pigeon th that is the problem. Some people say, oh, it has no grammar. Okay, it has no grammar. And they say it's, uh, it's corrupt uh, language. Well, we, we won't call it language per se. Pigeon is not a language until, uh, you know, it, we start from the pigeon form, okay? And we go to, the Creole form. So pigeon is Creolized. What, what does that mean? When a whole generation speak nothing but the pigeon. Let's say now you speak pigeon, okay? And your children or their children, the only thing they know is the pigeon, it becomes a language. Okay, that's why we're talking about uh, 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 Sierra Leone Creole, uh, Creole in Haiti, okay, which is uh, a mixture of the French, the language of the colonizer, and indigenous languages. So it always naturally fit into that because remember, it shapes our thought. So if we're, that's why people should not. Uh, have what they call Académie Française. The Académie Française is uh, uh, making sure that, yes, the language is spoken properly, that uh, uh, new rules are not being created. But that's vain. That's, you, don't, you, don't, you don't do that because you are seeking purity. Uh, purity means as it was spoken by our ancestors. Gracious, no. Our forefathers or ancestors, if they were to come back, they won't recognize. They, won't make, they may not even understand the, the type of Yoruba that we speak in today. It's not because we, we're forcing the way. No, it's, it just comes naturally based on the events, based on the sociology, on the psychology, the anthropology, all of the disciplines. Even technology, you see, when you're talking about website today, 
We're using language of technology, adapting it to our, uh, our language. And the syntax takes longer to, to change, okay? The way we combine uh, sentences to form, sent, uh, combine words and phrases to form sentences, it takes longer for that syntax to change, okay? And uh, grammar is no limited to, uh, to, to the combination of words and phrases to produce meaningful utterances. It could be even at the level of, 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 of words, um, uh, you know, as they evolve, maybe we add prefixes or suffixes, or maybe those words will lose their prefixes and keep their uh, suffixes or words when they combine, especially the way we speak is different than the way we write. When you are writing, you spell it out, but when you're speaking, it's, it's, it, it flows. And it, in that flow, uh, you cannot separate uh, the words from one another at all if you're not a native speaker. And that's why it's so difficult for us people learning foreign languages to quickly catch it, to learn it, uh, especially, especially the verbal aspect of it. They say, I can't, they're going too fast. Too fast is what is natural pace for the native speaker. 